Hey there, my name is Devani, and thanks so much for tuning into Short Not Sweet. And this week, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite trend pieces from the past. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm in my early 30s, so pr probably like my heyday was like, I don't know, the late 2000s, like 2008, 2009, up to like 2013. Those are the pieces that really shaped my taste, what I'm super into. So that's gonna give you like my baseline. And let's get into some of these pieces right here because I know some of y'all are gonna remember them. And if I miss some things, please leave them down in the comments. Let's get into it. The first thing that I wanna talk about is Givenchy and those sweatshirts, t-shirts that they used to come out with with the big old Rottweiler on them. Um, and they also came out with t-shirts. They also had bags with the big old like Bambi image on it. And Bambi was looking into a mirror or something like that. Let's talk about it. Okay, so the, the Rottweiler pieces came out uh, in the fall 2011 men's collection. And this is when Ricardo Tishy, Tishy, I think that's how you say it. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, this is when he was a creative director. I think this is my favorite Givenchy era. I really love this um, era. And this piece was spotted on so many celebs. You could not go anywhere without seeing that damn dog barking at you on somebody's chest. It was everywhere. Of course it was on Rihanna, it was on Kanye West, it was on everybody, okay? And one thing you'll notice is Rihanna is gonna be a mainstay throughout this video because she was a trend girl. She had every trend and she looked great in all of them. And this trend was no different. Uh, the other thing I was talking about was the t-shirts the with Bambi on through the looking glass. Now this one debuted in fall 2013 in the woman's line. Ricardo said she really loved like an animal print motif. He also had like, a collection with like black panthers all over it. I don't I don't understand it, but he really loved the little animal motif. And this Bambi one, I never quite got it, but it was hot. It was on everybody, okay? I, you know, this is one, I don't know. Like some trends I look back and I'm like, ooh, I would love to own that still. This one, I'm not sure. I think I'm okay with it staying back in that time period. Maybe the Rottweiler shirt I would still wear today, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Okay, the next trend piece that really just everybody was into back in my back in my day uh, was the Stella McCartney Elise platform sneakers, and they also came in like brogues, and these still exist to this day. You'll see them; they have like the faux leather upper because you know Stella McCartney is a vegan line. Um, the faux leather upper; they will have like the wooden sole, and then like excuse me, the wooden like platform, and then it'll have like a rubber sole underneath. Just a very cool shoe. And this is one of the ones to this day. First of all, it's still available. And I would still wear it to this day. I feel like it has become like a staple of her line. Uh, and I don't think it's controversial to say that. It's a staple of her collection. They make it every single season. And it's something I think it's a classic. And I, I don't think it gets old. I still would wear this. Again, we saw it on so many celebrities. We saw it on Rihanna. We saw it on Cara Delevingne. We even saw it on Oprah Girl. I'll post a picture of that somewhere on the screen. I mean, this, and the, I think what it is, it, it's a cool shoe. Uh, because it's a flat form, it, it seems like a comfortable shoe too. Now, I do want to try these on. I've heard that they run maybe like one size big or small. Um, but I want to I wanna try them on. And I want to know if they're heavy. Because the wooden sole, like that's got to be heavy, right? I don't know. But this is a shoe that I still would wear to this day. And these are released in the fall of 2014. And still, still I would wear them all these years later. Coming up on 10 years actually. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, and this is more like a micro trend. You know how we're all into micro trends now, but I feel like this was, it wasn't on everybody, but the person that it was on, it was very influential in pop culture. Okay, so the next trend is shutter sunglasses. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know y'all remember what I was talking about because I know y'all were there in 2007 in the Kanye West Stronger music video with them damn shutter shades on. And we all had a pair, the cheap pair that you get down down to the, to the boardwalk or something like that. I know we all had a pair. They were ridiculous. They came in all type of neon colors, okay? I was there. If you were there, I know you know, okay? Now, I don't know that we saw them on too many people other than Kanye West. But Kanye West always was kind of a, even if the fashion world wasn't always, you know, following behind him, I feel like in pop culture, he was always pretty influential. Um, and this is definitely a sign of that. Um, and so many, so many uh, pictures of him in those. It was a moment. It was, You had to be there. Otherwise, you'd be like, what the hell is this? You'd be interested to know the shutter sunglasses were designed by Alain Neakley. I think that's how you say it. Alain, maybe? Um, specifically for Kanye West's music video back in 2007. 
But those were really inspired by like fashions in the 1980s, which kind of makes sense. We were very into the 80s back in like 2007, 2008, okay? We were really into that. And the neon colors, we were very interested in that. And those 80s fashions were actually inspired by 50s fashion. So everything goes back. Um, and there was something called Venetian blinds glasses. And I'll put up pictures of like people in the 50s wearing glasses with these like Venetian blind things all over them. So everything comes back into style. It's nothing is really new under the sun. Um, and I really found it interesting doing the research on those to find out that Kanye West did not invent that. That was something that existed way before him. Um, so the next trend that I wanted to talk about was the Steven Sprouse ex Louis Vuitton collaboration. Now this originally, this collaboration originally took place um in spring their spring summer 2001 line um but i was a little bit too young to have been paying attention back then they re-upped that collaboration um after steven sprouse's death he died in 2004 i believe um, and they re-upped that collaboration kind of in, in homage to him in the year 2009 when mark jacobs was at the head of louis vuitton um, and even if you don't know it's a Steven Sprouse collab, you'll probably know what it looks like. It's basically a graffiti LV lo Louis Vuitton logo over the top of the LV traditional monogram. Um, also like those pink and red roses that were kind of painted over the LV monogram. Again, I will put up pictures. Super iconic. And to that, to this day, those pieces are very coveted. In 2021, they did like a 20 year kind of anniversary of that first co collaboration. Um, and so to this day, those pieces, they look super fresh and they're super cool. If you're really into Louis Vuitton, it's a great piece to have in your collection. Another thing about that being a collaboration, we are in a period of time when there are so many design house collaborations. Um, and a lot of times it kind of feels gimmicky. It's like, it's here today, gone tomorrow. But that's one of those collaborations that shows that they can stand the test of time. You can do something where both parties come together and create something that does leave an impact. Uh, so sometimes collaborations are worth it. I just wanted to point that out with this Steve Spr Steven Sprouse uh, collaboration with Louis Vuitton. So the next thing I want to talk about was the Alaya Platform Lace Up Hiking Booties. And... I don't, the reason why probably I remember this so vividly is because this was like Beyonce's favorite shoe. And I'm a Beyonce stand from time, okay? Back in the day, day, I love Beyonce. Um, and just picture it. Beyonce, skinny jeans, the Alaya Lace Up booties, and what did she have on her head? She had that big old fedora because you know, back in the late 2000s, you had to have you a fedora. If you didn't have a fedora, really who were you okay and so there are so many pictures of her wearing her little skinny jeans with her fedora and her alive booties you've got to get into it so many other celebs wore them um i've seen pictures of kelly Rowland wearing them too there's pictures of beyonce like holding little blue wearing these gigantic heels i don't know how she did it and let me just the shoe is um, it's basically, it's a platform booty, it has laces, uh, it has a lugged sole, sometimes it has like a print on it, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it's a very cool booty. It's one of those things that even to this day, I would still wear that. If, you know, if my ankles wasn't so bad and I could handle a heel like that, I would definitely be wearing it. Um, but it, it didn't go work. It didn't go work for me, but still very fresh. And they still do make iterations of this booty to this day. I couldn't find out um, exactly when this was released. It might be pretty old and it just kind of had a resurgence back in like 2013, 2014. Um, but a great shoe, a great shoe, girl. It's, it's Alaya, you know Alaya just always is so fabulous. The next thing I wanted to talk about were the are the YSL cage booties. Okay, these were released in spring 2009 um, for YSL, of course. And they are basically a strappy like cage sandal. Um, with like this architectural kind of at least i feel like it's, it almost looks like it's made of scaffolding on the side of a building uh and the the really cool part of it of course it has like the strappy front um but the re the part that really always like amazed me was the heel because it was all like it was like it was a see-through heel kind of made of it, it, i don't know how to explain it i'm putting up pictures and I ho i'm hoping that you remember it as well Again, it was seen on so many celebrities, Sierra, Beyonce, Kim Kardashian. It was a great shoe, great shoe, came in black, came in silver, might have come in some other colors too. It was just a classic piece. Um, you can also find that on the re resale market, of course. I've seen it um, on one of my favorite YouTubers here, Jeronica Mycia. 
she has a pair and I think she said it's not a very comfortable pair of shoes and I can believe that because the straps are very thin I can just imagine like my little poor pinky toe holding on for dear life like I just I couldn't do it but the look of those sometimes you gotta suffer for art and those are truly truly a collector's item and just an art art an art piece that's what they really are they look they're just they look, it's almost like you look at those especially the heel again how do they exist how do they exist and that is a piece that will always kind of have my heart even if it's not a piece that i would personally wear because i literally could never <laughs> okay the next piece i want us to talk about are the balmain military jackets okay now i don't know if these were first released in this era but I know this is when they really came on my radar and they took over celebrity culture. And this was in the spring 2009 women's collection. You'll recognize those, you'll recognize those jackets by like the strong, like pointy, to a point child, shoulders uh, with like the ornate embellishments, like the little, I don't know the exact words, okay? But you'll definitely recognize them with all those embellishments beautiful amazing i mean i wanted one of those things so badly and even back then i love fashion but i was never in the market for it like 19 year old Debbie, even okay 33 year old Debbie doesn't have the funds for a ball one jacket but 19 it was not even something i wanted to know the price of i didn't even consider looking up the price but i do remember hearing even back then how expensive Balmain was and i can believe it given the detailing on those jackets now again who do we see this on? Say it with me. It was on Rihanna. I remember she had a denim version with like black detailing on it. Oh my goodness. Okay, but also on Beyonce, on so many celebrities, they were really iconic. And to this day, Bama does make those um beautiful, but beautifully cut blazers and everything like that, but nothing quite like that. I think that's very of the time, those pointy shoulders. That was very, very 2009. It was a very slim fit too. Again, we love the slim fit in the, the late 2000s. We love that little. Now we're very into like like oversized blazers, but in that time, oh no, you had to have a slim fit, okay? That's how it worked. Um, but even now in the oversized blazer era, I have to say those like pointy 2009 era blazers, they left an impression on me. If I could ever get my hands with something similar that fit well on me, I'm gonna have to make it work. I'm gonna have to make it work. Okay, the last piece, Hervé Leger. Hervé Leger bandage dresses, you know you know, I had to do this, okay? You could not step foot outside of your door. You could not go onto a blog. Remember blogs? You remember fashion blogs, okay? You could not go onto a blog without seeing a celebrity in one of these Hervé Leger bandage dresses in every color. They did a little, you know, tiny little, and you know, they made it a little different. Maybe they cut the neckline different, separated it out, made it striped. Dude. But you know what? You wasn't a celebrity if you didn't have one of these Herbe Leger bandage dresses. Now, funnily enough, this concept, this by Herbe Leger, is pretty old. These first were released uh, in the early 90s, really. Um, but Herbe Leger, the, the creator of this, um, he would put out collections featuring, you know, pieces with this bandage material, but it, he would also pair it with less bodycon things. And I read a really interesting article about the dress and the origins and the origins of Herbe Leger on the on Glamour, the, the magazine's website. I will link it below because it's super interesting. Um, it's actually like a knit. It's actually knitted. That's the way they make it. I don't know about sewing and all that, but I just found that super interesting. So I will definitely link it below. Um, but what happened is in 1998, his brand, Urban Leger's brand, was bought out by Max Azria. So when you see Urban Leger by Max Azria, that's because it was bought out by that brand. And for a couple of years, they were just trying to understand. I don't know why my cat decided now he needs to sit in my lap. Can, can I get a moment? Damn. Anyway, but Max Azria, he saw the popularity of those dresses, those bandage dresses. And he decided to kind of like double down on it, like figure out exactly how to make those in the best way. And that's when he started to release it in all these iterations, all these colors. And now we've seen it on so many celebrities. And it may have been kind of dying down for a while, but I felt I feel like there's a little bit of a resurgence. And you can find them in so many places on the outnet, of course on their website. And they're pretty, you know, reasonably priced. For a designer brand, I feel like they're pretty reasonably priced. So you can still find them on the market today. And I don't know, is that something I would still wear today? I'm not sure, maybe. 
May, especially if they really suck you in in a cute little way, I might have to check that out even to this day. Okay, so that is the end of my list. I wanna know what did I forget? Please leave it down in the comments. And I also wanna know of the pieces that I did mention, which ones would you still wear to this day? I really want to know that. So let me know down in the comments. Uh, hopefully this was fun. If it was, maybe you'll consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel. You can also find me on my website, shortnotsweet.com. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram at shortnotsweetdevany. Thank you so, so much for watching and please take care of yourself. Bye.